Welcome to Mass, everybody, on this sixth Sunday of Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's best gift, enabling us in the words of today's responsorial psalm to cry out with joy to God. As always, as we prepare for Mass, we pray for God's mercy, knowing that God is even more eager to grant that gift than we are to receive it. Lord Jesus, you call us to keep your commandments. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you never withhold your love from us. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you promise us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honour of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went to a Samaritan town and proclaimed the Christ to them. The people united in welcoming the message Philip preached, either because they had heard of the miracles he worked or because they saw them, saw them for themselves. There were, for example, unclean spirits that came shrieking out of many who were possessed, and several paralytics and cripples were cured. As a result, there was great rejoicing in that town. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, and they went down there and prayed for the Samaritans to receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet he had not come down on any of them. They had only been baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. O sing to the glory of his name. O render him glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous your deeds. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Before you all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Come and see the works of God, tremendous his deeds among men. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river dry shod. Let our joy then be in him. He rules forever by his might. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Come and hear all who fear God. I will tell what he did for my soul. Blessed be God who did not reject my prayer, nor withhold his love from me. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Reverence the Lord Christ in your hearts, and always have your answer ready for people who ask you the reason for the hope that you all have. But give it with courtesy and respect, and with a clear conscience, so that those who slander you when you are living a good life in Christ 
may be proved wrong in the accusations that they bring. And if it is the will of God that you should suffer, it is better to suffer for doing right than for doing wrong. Why, Christ himself, innocent though he was, had died once for sins, died for the guilty, to lead us to God. In the body he was put to death, in the spirit he was raised to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I shall ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. That spirit of truth, whom the world can never receive, since it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he is with you. He is in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come back to you. In a short time the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, and you will live. On that day you will understand that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Anybody who receives my commandments and keeps them will be one who loves me, and anybody who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I shall love him and show myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A number of years ago, a young couple with their two young children, brother and sister, were having a few days away from home together, a little mini break. On Sunday, they went to the local Catholic church for Mass. It was packed, only a small church up in the Lake District. The little girl was ever so pious and well-behaved. The little boy, slightly older than his sister, was up and down and underneath the benches. The mother had tried several times to control him, until eventually the dad noticed the little boy was underneath the bench again. This time, the little boy was tying the shoelaces together of a gentleman in the bench behind. That was it. The dad apologised to the gentleman, picked up his son and took him straight out of church. This was right in the middle of the priest's sermon. All people could hear from outside was screaming and crying from the little boy as he got a leathering off his dad. Both returned for the rest of Mass. Problem solved. Silence. Until after Mass, as people were leaving, the dad got the most horrible looks of some members of the congregation. He turned to his young wife and said, What's up? Why are people looking at me like that? The young wife said, as soon as he started screaming and shouting and crying, everyone in church could hear it. The priest stopped his sermon and said, Poor little fella, I don't blame him having to listen to me. The priest stopped his sermon and then just got on with the rest of Mass. The young dad was mortified. There was a young mum with two small children a boy and a girl, at the 4.30pm Mass at St Joseph's, Chorley, over 20 years ago. And there was an elderly couple sat behind them. The little boy was playing up all the way through Mass. He was a complete and utter distraction. At the end of Mass, the young mum turned to the elderly couple and apologised for the behaviour of her young son. The old man replied to the young mum, No need to apologise, my dear. 
We used to have a son just like that. The young mum, with a sense of relief, said, Did you really? The old man said, Yes. He's just said Mass for you. They were my parents. My dad then told the young woman the story of the shoelaces. That young mum couldn't wait to get into school here at St Joseph's on Monday morning. Now I'm sure you will find that story very hard to believe of a future priest. He'd probably be about 15 at the time. <coughs> Years ago, Pope Paul VI was asked, what is the greatest need of the church today? Without hesitation, he replied, the Holy Spirit. That need has not diminished with the passing of the decades. The word advocate, used of the Holy Spirit, literally means someone called in. It has been wisely said that the Holy Spirit seldom gate crashes. The Spirit normally waits to be called in, waits to be invited. These final weeks before Pentecost, the feast of the Holy Spirit, are the ideal time for us to offer the invitation, praying earnestly that we may be ever more richly blessed with the Spirit's gifts of love, joy, power and gentleness, and especially gentleness. Poor little fella. I don't blame him having to listen to me. Let's now make our profession of faith. Okay, we'll say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived from the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. In prayer we bring to the Father our needs and those of our sisters and brothers. Let us pray for Pope Francis and all the bishops that they may be guided and strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who work for Christian unity that their efforts may be rewarded and that Christians everywhere may be truly one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who in the midst of sufferings, difficulties or stress feel that God has deserted them, that they may experience the powerful uplifting presence of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for all who work in the caring professions, protect those doctors, nurses, healthcare workers and volunteers who are on the front line of this pandemic emergency and are risking their lives to save others. Support their heroic effort and grant them strength, generosity and continued health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask our Blessed Lady to pray with us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In silence, let us now pray for our own intentions. Heavenly Father, 
we ask you to hear our prayers, which we make in union with your Son, Jesus, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, who is Lord for ever and ever. Amen. So pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time of a all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Malcolm, our Archbishop, his assistant bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. And Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the risen Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Always conscious at this moment in the Mass at Holy Communion about all of you who are unable to receive the Eucharist at the moment. But at this moment, let's make that spiritual communion together in the prayer of St. Alphonsus. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, Come spiritually into my soul, that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and for ever. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. As always, to ask your continued prayers for the sick of the parish, especially those in our nursing homes and most especially in our hospitals at the moment. Heal thy servants, O Lord, who are sick and who put their trust in thee. Send them help, O Lord, and comfort from thy holy place. We also remember those who have recently died and all those whose anniversaries occur about this time. And we remember especially those who have died as a result of the pandemic at the moment. Pray for their families as well. Say the eternal rest. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. I really just remind everybody that uh, Thursday, uh, the 21st of May, is the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord. So um, hopefully I'll be saying Mass, but I will be saying Mass, I'll be saying two Masses, but I'll be recording a Mass uh, on the Ascension. Uh, I don't think I'll be up at St. Gregory's. Um, I'm up at St. Gregory's for the 6.30 Mass on Sunday the 17th, tomorrow the 17th. Uh, so uh, we'll see you there then, but uh, do say the prayers from the bulletin and also keep each other in prayer and do keep safe. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God bless you all. Thank you.